just a quick uh, introduction. Uh, most of us, his specialty is in grid cyber security. That's almost the only thing he works on. <laughs> uh, so he, he finished his uh, PhD in 2018, just under a joint program uh, between uh, Shiraz University in Iran and Arizona State University. He's now a postdoc uh, at Arizona State, uh, working primarily on cybersecurity and AI and machine learning applications in smart, smart grid. He has published a lot of uh, papers for, uh, for postdocs, has a, a lot of papers. Uh, so I'll, I'll let him start his presentation. This is Mustafa. Today we will talk about cybersecurity of smart grid, offensive security and defensive security. I am a postdoctoral researcher at ASU. I hold a computer science PhD, specifically working on cybersecurity of smart grid for 10 years, almost 10 years. So first we will start with inter, uh, in traditional power grid. As you already know, in traditional power grid, you have bulk generation delivered to the end user. And the most important feature is having one way electricity flow. End user has no share of water in generation. End user doesn't end user. We have both generation delivered to users. So what could what are the most important differences between smart grid and traditional grid? And why do we call it smart grid? In smart grid, the most important factor that has changed it to be intelligent grid or future grid or smart grid is the fact that we have the power of distributed energy resources including solar panels, power, wind farms, and etc. Why we have those? Because we want also the users to have the share in generation. The main difference between traditional grid and a smart grid is that the end user now has share in generation. It is not pure end user. It hold, it, the user, end user can also generate electricity, sell it. So once the end user can generate electricity and sell it, we need to have more entities compared to traditional grids, like operations, like markets, where I should sell my electricity as an end user in market. So the most important difference between traditional grid and smart grid is two-way information flow. We will talk about this. But let's also all review some other features. In existing grids, we have different features which have been revolutionized in smart grid. But one of the features that we will talk about it in this uh, presentation, it's about self-healing. A smart grid should be equipped with a feature called self-healing. We will see how this self-healing feature works on cybersecurity and how researchers in cybersecurity overlook this feature, self-healing. Why cybersecurity of smart grid is important? There are many reasons that cybersecurity of smart grid is important because of the increased targets, increased attacks. But to cut the long story short, whoever controls the grid controls the community infrastructure. Whoever controls the grid controls the community infrastructure. Without electricity, we even can't hold this meeting. So it is a base for everything. And that's why recently attackers and hackers have targeted many electricity companies, distribution companies, and smart is a very interesting target for hackers. There are some security policies and aims in cybersecurity and IT security we should follow. One is confidentiality, the second is integrity, the third is availability. We call it CIA, confidentiality, integrity, availability. These are usually well accepted policies that we should follow in IT security. The priority is confidentiality first in IT security, integrity second, availability is third. Confidentiality means that our communication should not disclose to unauthorized parties. Integrity means that the message that they have, have sent to you should not be changed or manipulated in communication, communication line. The receiver should receive the same message sent by sender. Availability means that the, server, the service should, shall be online and available all the time. What do you think that the priority in critical infrastructure and in the smart grid is the same as IT security? In critical infrastructure, we have the reverse priority. Availability is more important than confidentiality. Availability is more important than integrity. So the priority is reverse. 
it is not like IT security, say that confidentiality, integrity, availability. In smart grid context, generally critical infrastructure context, we say that availability is important, second, integrity, and third, confidentiality. Let's have some examples about it. Confidentiality in the smart grid. What could be the example of confidentiality, attack to confidentiality? For example, consumption data, load data, consumption data by users could be an example of confidential data. No one should eavesdrop my consumption data. What could happen? For example, a robber, thief, burglar, could, rob, could eavesdrop, could sneak the traffic to understand which houses are empty in the neighborhood. So they will spot the empty houses. Or more important, industrial espionage. Industry competitors could eavesdrop the consumption data, the low data, to understand what the components do. Specifically, when they are going to announce a new product, there might be an increase in the consumption data. So the confidential is important, but I already told the priority. Integrity. Integrity in smart grid means that measurements should not be manipulated. The measurements that are sent by sensors and devices, meters, to control center. And control center receives sensors, receive measurements from sensors to do some functions in analytics to report some information, to make a decision for making decisions. Those measurements should not be changed. It means integrity. Availability. What is the service that we provide in smart grid? Electricity. It shall be always available. So it is not important to have confidentiality. It's important to have always availability. It is not important for me to actually steal consumption data while I don't have electricity. So the priority is reverse. But sometimes we do not need to target availability. For each type of category, we have a specific type of cyber attacks. But sometimes we can conduct integrity attacks, specifically I'm talking about smart grid. We can conduct integrity attacks leading to availability attacks. We will see that. So you need to have a solid understanding of smart grid and its functions to know that how you can launch in integrity attacks leading to availability attacks. What are the overall general attacks that could happen in cybersecurity of smart grids? Cyber attacks like malware, phishing that we will cover in this presentation. In other important categories in cyber attacks, another one is vulnerability. Why I have brought this? Because usually, Hackers use vulner exploit vulnerabilities to conduct attack. So one might ask that vulnerability is the same as cyber attack. By vulnerability, I don't mean regular vulnerabilities. It's a question of critical infrastructure, the question of advanced persistent threats. We are buying some stuff from other countries. In, when it's a question of advanced persistent threats, sometimes there might be a nation, a country behind of the attack. We, like what happened in Venezuela, we buy some stuff, electricity, transformers, device, cheap phone, smart cards from another country. How do you make sure that there aren't any malware embedded in those devices? You have done all things to protect your cyber smart grid, but you have bought some stuff devices that already are equipped with malwares. What is your solution for those kind of attacks? So by vulnerability, I mean those kind of Attacks. So we can classify into three groups, regular cyber attacks, malware, phishing attacks that we will cover in this presentation, in cyber attack, and also vulnerabilities. By vulnerabilities, I mean nationwide attacks. I mean, attack by other countries, you, you should care about what you buy, where you buy, and you should also evaluate, sanitize the data that are, the devices that are going to use in your grid. We will, in this presentation, we will talk about different cyber attacks, as I mentioned, cyber attacks on energy storage, cyber attacks on distributed energy resources, cyber attacks on distribution grid, cyber attacks on transmission grid. So we will cover a wide variety of cyber attacks. But let's dive into one example. One of the examples, one of the attacks that already have discussed a lot in literature of smart grid cybersecurity. A state estimation is a function in a smart grid in energy management center and control center, it's a very it's a essential function. Why is it an essential function? Because the output of a state estimation is used by many functions in energy management system and central center. A state estimation tries to minimize the loss of the measurements received by sensors because we don't have we don't receive 
very accurate measurements. We do need to minimize the loss in precision measurements. And also we don't have sensors, device metering devices all around the grid. It's very expensive to have sensors and meters all around the grid. So what is another task of responsibility of state estimation? To estimate the unmeasured variables, to estimate the measurements that we do not have any centimeters over there. So a state estimation is a very important function of the control center. Why? Because the output of a state estimation is the input of many important other important functions. The state estimation receives measurements, active power, reactive power, power injection, and the output of the state estimation system states called phase angles and voltage magnitudes. Since it's a very important function, it has been targeted by attackers and attackers. So it is very interesting to attack the system states because the output of the state estimation, which are system states, are used by many other functions. But a state estimation also is equipped with a function called bad data detector, BDD, bad data detector. It drops the measurements, faulty measurements. If I receive a faulty measurement, that data will drop, it will eliminate it, will not feed that, that measurement to the control center. Recently, I mean a couple of years ago, a cyber attack has been discussed in the literature that target a state estimation in such a way that I change the measurements that are fed into a state estimator, are input to the state estimation function. The hacker changed those measurements in such a way that the output of a state estimation, which is system state, will be affected negatively, and attacker inject arbitrary errors to output of system states, while the hacker or attacker will be able to bypass the bad data detector. The bad data detector will not raise any alarms. Why it, it happens? Because the error have here, if you see, the attacker inject the attack vector to the normal measurement received by meters, remote terminal units, and PMUs, the attack vector is injected to normal measurements. But the attack vector needs to actually meet some conditions. What is it here? It's a Jacobian matrix and topology matrix, information about the topology of grids. Attacker in FDIA attack to the system in such a way that he will change the measurement. Finally, he will inject arbitrary errors to system states. At the same time, the residual error of the manipulated measurement computed by bad data detector will be the same as normal measurement. So nothing happens. Normal measurement residual error is the same as manipulated measurement error. But you need to meet this condition. Attack vector that you are adding to the measurements should meet this condition. What is C? These attack costs. How much do you want to change the system state? 10%? For example, voltage magnitude is one, 10 percent means 1.1. 20 percent, 5 percent, 1 percent, the attacker controls the arbitrary errors that injected to system states. And each matrix is Jacobian matrix topology information. So the only uh, another important point, I don't need to change all measurements to change the system state. Imagine here, see here, this is the IEEE 14 bus system. I, as an attacker, I want to inject or change the system state of bus 13. I don't need to change all measurements. I just need to find the dependent measurements, these three lines, dependent measurements to that bus, and change those measurements. So a question, how can attacker just notice dependent measurements by this edge matrix? You might say that not always the attacker has inform insider information not always the attacker has information about the topology of the grid. We will later discuss about this limitation and how we can relax it, how already has been relaxed. So by, for, by for, uh, attacking one bus, I don't need to change all measurements. I just need to find dependent measurements to that bus and change those measurements. For here, three lines. I need to change the measurements of three lines. What could be the impacts of smart, uh, FDA on smart grid? Financial loss? Because wrong information, wrong decisions could lead to tripping a line, line outages, topology change, financial loss, blackout, brownout, and also since it is a question of critical infrastructure, also safety concerns. What are security mechanisms that could be used in this market, not only to defend against FDIA, defend all types of cyber attacks happen in this market? 
In IT security, there is a concept called defense in depth. Defense in depth. The first layer is prevention. The second layer is detection. The third layer is recovery. In prevention, it is clear. We don't want to have any cyber attacks. We prevent cyber attacks. In detection, we imagine the cyber attack happened. We weren't able to protect the system, prevent the cyber attack. Cyber attack has happened. But we need to initial phases. In initial phases, we need to detect the cyber attacks before having catastrophic consequences. The final step, we say that we weren't able to prevent that from attack. We weren't able to detect the attacks. So attack has happened. How we can recover from the cyber attack? In smart, specifically, I'm talking about smart grid. How we can recover from cyber attack? Because we don't have nothing named absolute security. We do not have absolute security. We are just increasing the attack costs. Whatever we do, we increase the attack costs. So we, this presentation, we will cover all the uh, aspects, prevention, detection, and recovery. What can be done in prevention phase? What has been done, I mean, usually regular in literature review, we can use encryption, but not blindly encrypt all measurements because it's very expensive. We can spot most important measurements, most important sensors, I mean, identifying critical sensors. They using tamper-proof devices or like SSM hardware security modules or do encryption on those lines, on those fund, important fund security uh, meters. The second step that is used in prevention phase is redundancy. What redundancy mean? Attack, I mentioned a couple of slides ago, I mentioned that for attacking just one bus, I need to change the dependent measurement of the bus. If, as a defender of a system, I change dependent measure, I increase the dependent measurements of each bus, I install more sensors on the system, on the grid, so what would happen? The attacker needs to attack more measurements, change more measurements, so it increases the attack cost. One of the other ways to protect, prevent uh, from attacks is redundancy. The third one, it's, which is very important, the recent topic, and I will discuss about this more, is moving target defense, MTD, moving target defense. In moving target defense, the defender of the system, the owner of the system, regularly changes the attack service. What it means attack service, I will discuss about this. But before diving into details of moving target defense, let's see what could be the drawbacks of prevention methods. First, they are dependent to specific assumptions about the system. The prevention methods, the papers, works, projects that have been done in prevention, they assume that I have a static smart grid. There is no line contingency. There is no generation out there. There is no line out there. There is no integration of renewable energies. There is no integration of distributed energy, solar panels. They imagine we have a static network. Why the smart grid is a dynamic network, you can see it. To cut a long story short, they are also expensive because using encryption, using hardware secure modules, using secure sensor is not that cheap. For example, if you buy a, sen for example, a simple sensor for $1, secure sensor will cost you $100. So it is also expensive. But let's dive into MTD, which is a very, very promising idea topic for smart grid cybersecurity and the prevention technique. Moving target defense. As I mentioned in moving target defense as a prevention technique, attack service, the defender of the system changed the attack surface of the system. But how it happens in smart grid? In FTIA, for example, I told that the attacker needs to have some information about the topology of the grid. And what we call it, the Kubian matrix. What did happen if I change as a defender of the system, I change the Jacobian matrix of the system regularly? If you remember in FDA, I told that attack should meet a condition. Attack vector should equal to H multiplied by C. X is the Kubian matrix topology information about the topology of the grid. If I change this topology of the grid regularly as a defender of the system, what would happen? The attacker spent one week to attack the system. At the last step that he wants to conduct the attack and finalize the attack, 
a day before, or two days before, three days before, I have seen the topology of the grid. How? Usually, what techniques is used in smart grid for MTD? Changing line reactances of the system. The defender of the system change line reactances of the system. What would happen? When I change line reactances of the system, I indirectly will change the Jacobian matrix, the topology of the grid. Active power, reactive power, all will be impacted. So I change the topology of the grid by changing line reactances. How I change line reactances? By defects. I change line reactances. I change topology of the grid. Attacker wants to attack to the system. With all, what will happen? The attacker will attack to the system with all the information. So once he injects the attack vector, the normal measurement, the residual error will not be the same as the normal measurement. And the, the measurement will be dropped by bad data detector. So without using any detection method, without using any machine learning technique, the bad data detector will detect more, almost 99% of them manipulated measurements, because bad data detector has a threshold, <coughs> it computes a residual error. If the normal manipulated measurement result is less than the threshold, it will bypass. But if it is not, it will be dropped. And when the attacker attacks to the system by all the information, by all the Jacobian metrics that I already have changed in my system by MTD, the residual error of the attack measurement will be higher than Residual error of the threshold of BDD. For example, for IT14 bus system, it is 6.5. Is that a question? Yes, that's a question. Yeah, oh, sure. Just how long does that take for you to do as the person protecting the grid? And kind of what is the trade off that you face? Like, why would you not just do that all the time? Exactly. I will talk about the trade off, but how long, how regularly it happens? Three or five days. Regularly, this is three, five days. Okay. Paper research papers, three or five days. But it depends on the defender of the system and exactly the point that you mentioned trade off. I change the line reactances. The Jacobian matrix become old. I detect the old measure attack, the attacks manipulated measurements by just a simple BDD. Already all grids have almost. I don't need any machine learning. I don't need anything. So line reactances is, for example, major numbers is X is one. I make it 1000. The more change you have in line reactance, the better detection you rate you will have. But does it make sense? Line reactances. I don't have any power grid limitations. What, what's the trade-off? What should I consider also when I change line reactances? Because if there is no trade-off, I can change the more I, 100, 1 to 100, 200. So the more I change, the better detection, I will get 100% detection rate. Cost. OPF cost. Because power grid is also about cost. It's a question of cost. And later I will discuss that the limitation of the research, current research papers could be a new research direction. Cost. I can't change whatever I want. I also need to have a trade-off between costs when I change my reactance. They call it so cost benefit moving target difference. A new concept. Cost benefit empty. Because I need to change topology matrix in a way that the OPF, the cost will be in an acceptable range. Because the generation definitely the generation cost will change from one dollar to one point one. But I can't see I can't see the system in such a way that, for example, if the generation cost for me is one hundred dollar to make it one thousand dollar. So what's the point of it? The defender of system will say that if I attack the attack the system, the cost will be one five hundred dollar. But you implement the system for me that the change the cost from one dollar to five hundred, one thousand dollar. It's better to have cyber attacks in the system. So there is a trade-off between cost and MTD. There is a trade-off between cost and MTD. But there were, I will talk about this cost again and our own submitted paper on this uh, issue. But overall, MTD, one of the most important parts of MTD is dynamic threat response. We regularly change the attack service so the attacker wouldn't be able to attack the system. And we enhance the resiliency of, finally we enhance the resiliency of your Great, without any machine learning technique, without any extra stuff. What, what are the challenges of uh, moving target defense? One is cost. We already discussed. The only trade off that have been discussed in literature, literature, I mean, all published papers on MTD, in smart grid cybersecurity, 
which cost. I need to change in such a way that I also will have acceptable costs for my generation. I raise a question here. Is there, do you think that, uh, please respond to this question, do you think that there are other limitations also that researchers overlook it? What could be the other limitation researchers overlook? It is not, we talked about one item, cost, and already have been considered. There should be a trade-off between cost and MTD, cost of generation, because attack cyber attack is a question of cost. If I attack the system, it costs me $500, but I have implemented a system that costs me $10,000. What's the point of having prevention thinking? What are other limits? This could be uh, could lead to other research directions. What are other limitations that MTD systems look to do? Exactly. Power system is not summarized in just cost. Do you think it makes sense to summarize the whole power grid in just cost? Does it make sense? We have system stability, system security indexes. We have thousands of indexes in power grid. It does make sense to just grab one index to say that we need to have a trade-off between cost and MTD. What about other limitations? So another situation, what could be another question? If I have a situation that transient system stability and security indexes imposes to MTD, say that I can't reach detection rate higher than 60%. I mean, I consider all of the power grid indexes, stability indexes, security indexes, and say that if we want to meet those indexes, not only cost, I can reach detection rate higher than 60%. What's the another problem of MTD is that we see the problem from cyber side to the power side. Why? Here, power side is much more stronger than cyber set. Why? Available is more important than everything I discussed. The priority is reverse, not cyber security. You should have system always available, electricity available. So the limitation should be imposed from power side, not cyber side. The current focus is on cyber side. I have detection rate, I have cost. I should reach higher detection rate and also sacrifice cost a little bit. But what about other limitations? If my power grid stability indexes, security indexes tell me that I can reach higher detection, detection rate higher than 60%, how can I implement MTD in those systems? This is a, uh, we are already working on that. This is a, another research direction if you want, anyone is interested, we could also discuss after the meeting or you could email me. What this, how we can handle this limitation? I have brought for, uh, some results of our own submitted papers, right of the transactions on power systems. And regarding this, since it is one well, of submitted paper, I have just brought a little bit of a little proportion of results. I can't present all paper. But here, we have discussed about the detection rate on 118 bus system and compared with other two, uh, the blue ones are our proposed method, and the two other ones are published in other uh, journal, I mean, literature papers. We have risk actually higher detection rate, but the main, and also we have cost yeah. better or less cost than other methods. But the main important of this result is this table, where I have brought this result. In this paper, what, let me ask another question, then review this slide. What could be another limitation of MTD that already we discussed about one? Stability indexes, and we raised another research direction that could be followed. If we see security indexes, we see stability indexes, and we can reach detection rate higher than 60%, what could be the solution? Second limitation. What are other limitations? Accuracy. You, accuracies. Accuracy of what? Mm, measurement. Uh, that could be correct, but it is not our case. Yeah, that could be correct, but. What I emphasized in the differences of traditional grid and smart grid in the table. Self healing. I said the self healing is also important. What does self healing mean? It means that when I have a content in the stand, when I have a line outage in the power grid, how my prevention mechanism, how my detector, how my recovery method to have that self healing feature. Imagine that I have a line outage. 
of moving target defense matters why that why not this? Because the smart grid is a dynamic network. It is not a static network. I could have line outlets, generator outlets, integration of renewable energies, integration of solar panels, etc. Here, in this case study, we have simulated a simple line outlet. And you see, one of the methods, which is for AC, AC power grids, this one, why it has this one, this is our method, convergence rate of one. In the previous slide, I do not have that convergence rate. But I, in this table, I have convergence rate. Why? Because this result is for having a line outlet in the system. I implement the MTD technique after having the line outlet. When I have a line outlet in my system, what happens? How my proposed MTD methods can manage that line outlet? This method, cost benefit method, one of, belongs to one of my uh, previous co authors, uh, collaborators. Reach one. Why it has reached one? Why it has not discussed about cell cleaning? Because it is for DC grid. It, because it is for DC grid. And it has, it yields actually uh, lower detection rate and cost. You see this one. Since it is for DC one, when it's implemented for AC one, the cost is substantially increased. But it is able to yield convergence rate one when we have a content SC. But this method, published in 2023, United Transactions and Smart Grid, AEMTD, Extended Moving Target Defense, convergence rate is not one. Why? Because they have not considered the dynamic nature of power grid. The method is not converged after a line outage. If we have 10 line outages, what could happen is then probably this convergence rate will be reduced to 20%, 50%. What would happen to the convergence rate if you have 100% penetration rate of renewable energy. So cell healing is also very important and another limitation of it. Let's talk about detection site. In detection site, we say that cyber attack happened. Mm -hmm. I wasn't able to prevent it. So I need to detect it in the initial phase. What are used for detection of cyber attacks? Mission learning, statistical methods. In mission learning, many methods, traditional classifiers, k neighbor, support vector machines, LSTM, deep learning methods, different deep learning methods are used. Many, many methods. Usually well, how they work, they, you know, re, they gather real-time information, usually they simulate it or get from utility companies. Then they do some kind of normalizations and feature selection, then they run the algorithm, whatever it is, traditional classifier or it is deep learning based method. Usually the evaluation metric that's used in literature for those kind of detectors is precision, recall, and F measure. But let's talk about challenges of the detectors. Against self-healing, dependent to specific assumptions about the system configuration. They train an algorithm, they train a machine learning method on a fixed data set. So based on what we learn, is it correct? <clears throat> They imagine that I have IEEE 14 bus system, for example, IEEE X bus system, a network. There will be no change in the system. There will be absolutely no change in the system. No line outages, no generation outages, no cascading events due to cyber attacks, due to maintenance, no renewable energies, even bump in person penetration rate. Is it correct about smart grid? Smart grid is a dynamic network. We have, we do have contingencies, we do have line outages, we do have generation due to maintenance or adjust new adjustments, or we do have integration of renewable energy, solar panels. Later we will discuss about solar panels and renewable energies more. So also another limitation for specifically for supervised learning, initial learning, they require labels. Do I have labels in formation learning in real world? In real world, do I have tech samples in real world? I rarely can find the substation has been attacked, they provide the information to your label. So I do simulate. I simulate the data. But in real world, that might not be the case. Another one, considering all combinations. I discussed about attacking to bus 13 to a specific bus. Imagine that I have 3,000 bus system. I can attack to each bus. So for a successful machine learning method, I need to consider all combination of possible attacks. Attack to bus one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, ten, 
I should consider all combination of possible attacks because attacker selects to attack to bus one, 100, two, uh, simple two, two, five, 2004, 3000. I need to consider all combinations in my machine learning method to build this robust and solid training data set to be able to predict future samples and attacks. Is it possible, really? Is it possible? It is very difficult. So, so for a, a major drawback is that they consider a static network. For example, here we have a line out. Line to four to five, 62 megawatts. We have imagined we will have a line out. And we will have integration of renewable energies, thus 10% transition rate. What happens? I have this line out here, this IP14 bus system. This is a line out is line four to five, transferring 62 two megawatts, not 10 lines, just one line out. The blue one, the distribution before a line out is the distribution of phase angles, system states, before a line out is. The red one is a distribution after a line out. You see the tremendous shift in the distribution? What's the problem here? I train my machine learning model based on blue distribution. I train my machine learning algorithm based on blue line, blue distribution. What is the red one? Red one is a test distribution. Is it possible for a model built on blue lines, blue distribution, to correctly predict and classify samples, label samples, in future for red distribution? Train data set, test data set. What it means? I train my model based on a blue line, blue distribution. It works a year, even a year. After a year, a line outage happens. And after a year, I will have that line outage, for example, forever, because it, was, it might be a, because of maintenance and new adjustment. So what would happen? Cyber attacks happen after that line outage. For a year, nothing happened, no cyber attack. It's everything works. Line out this happens, new distribution comes. I attack to this distribution, to these measurements. Attack is here, attack distribution is here. Old observations become irrelevant to the new ones. Old observations become irrelevant to the new observations. We call it concept drift, covariance shift. The question How do you expect the machine learning perform in this situation? Because I will show in this slide. But how do you? To me, what will be the performance of machine learning? Working on this training on this one, test on this one. What could be the result? No estimation, no guess. Here, very, very simple case, very, very simple case. I have used three algorithms, Kainer's neighbor, uh, different laser learner, support vector machine and this decision tree. I have trained my algorithms on this data, on this network. I have generated some sam attacks. I have normal samples. I have attack samples. I have trained an algorithm. What's the accuracy of the data? Detection rate? Almost one. Three models leads to one detection rate. It means almost all methods are able to detect all attack samples. What's the second and third one? Second one, I imagine line outage happens here. And after that line outage, cyber attacks happen. I mean, I have this distribution. Attacks happen on this distribution. And I have tested the this train model on that data. You see the reduction of the accuracy of the data? Again, I emphasize, this is a very simple one. I could make it zero. I could make a scenario that detection rate will be graded to zero if I have cascading events. The third one, that's 10% penetration rate. And after integration of renewable energies, I have conducted attack, then I have used this trained model, as, and I have used as this one as a test. You see almost 20 or 30% reduction. Again, 10%. We can have more than 50%. We will see more reduction. I will not bring uh, uh, my re own result paper, results from my paper, because if you search my papers, I have talked a lot about this issue, concept drift. 
type of detection with radio frequencies, with path intensity, dynamic scale smart grids. So I have talked about a lot about this issue. Another problem with the current method of detection. I detect the attack. What is the problem? Do you see it is enough? Done, I detect that in a I3P14 bus. I spot this measurement as an attack, measurement X. Is it done? What we are missing here? I am in the real world. I am the owner of the system. I am defender of the system. What should happen after detecting the attack? You have to like handle any impacts, especially on availability. Like that, like if the, if the attack would impact availability, then you have to counteract that. Completely, you are right. But for that one, what should I do after detection? I need to spot which where? location where yeah. that you are totally right. But I need to spot where has been attacked, where which measurement, which bus has been attacked. I need to localize. We call it localization. In smart cybersecurity, we call this concept attack localization. Many papers don't consider attack localization. You know why? Attack detection is a binary classification. I have normal samples, I have attack samples. What happens? Binary classification. But when I have attack bus one, attack to bus two, three, four, three thousand, how many classes I should have? Three thousand classes I have. Do you see that it is easy to manage that 3,000 class classification problem? 3,000 accident one, 3,000 attack, and one normal, 3,001 class classification. Is it easy? You see, some in research we miss also the real world. It is called multi class classification problem. Multi class classification. For each attack, I have a new attack. Attack to boss one. Label, this label is attack to boss one, or attack on boss one. Bus two, bus three, bus five. I detect, then I say, all, not only only detect, I say also that this measurement is detect, detected, spotted as an attack, but attacking where? To location one, to location X, to location Y. So it is very difficult. Why it is very difficult and will lead to degrade of uh, accuracy, you see? Why will see reduction if I will see multiple classification, if I see the localization? Why the accuracy of the machine learning, the old machine learning model might decrease? I say that I did take an attack boss two. I did take an attack, is it correct? And attack boss five, when I have two class classification, binary classification. I did take also attack to boss 100 as an attack. You create both are attack. What when? I have multi class classification, 3000 boxes. I say that I detect this an attack. My model says that I detect this an attack. But instead of detecting it as an attack to boss one, I have detected it as an attack boss 100. So it is misclassification. It is correct that I have detected as part of the sample, attack sample, but that I have wrongly located it. Instead of saying that attack has happened on boss five, I say that my model says that attack has happened to bus 100. So F measure will be reduced. The accuracy will be reduced. That's also why we need to select event, correct evaluation metrics. In some research papers, you will see that they have 100% accuracy. But when you see the evaluation metrics, when you see the samples, or some, they might actually receive 95%. You see that, okay, 95% accuracy, it's good. But I had 100 samples, I had five attack samples, I have 95, I imagine this one. Papers on papers. Say that I have raised 95% accuracy. What has happened if you dive into the paper? It has 100 samples. In 100 samples, five samples were attacked, 95 samples were normal. The algorithm has detected all samples and a normal. Missed all, all five samples. It means whatever, uh, it, I run, it will receive that accuracy because I reach 95%. It's important for me to spot those attacks. Whatever I run, I will reach that accuracy, 95. I, if I don't have any algorithm, I say that all incoming measurements are normal. What would be the accuracy? 95%. Because 95 samples of the 100 samples are normal measurements. 
I missed one five percent. I've missed five samples. So it's also important in the research to focus on evaluation metrics and also data set and sample. And that's why multi-classification class classification is difficult because it's parting one attack to another is instead of another attack. I mean, say it is attack to bus five, it is stop saying to attack to bus 10 with degraded measure. So that's why researchers usually try to not talk about localization. Another one, reconstruction. I will come back to my sense about integrity attack and availability attack. I, as an attacker, you as a <coughs> owner of the system and defender of the system. I attack to the system, you use a well-tuned machine learning algorithm, you detect the attack. I attack the system, you keep dropping the image. I attack to the system, you keep dropping the image. What's it happening? You say, sorry. I attack to the system, you successfully spot the attack, and it's even localized that. What's it happening? But I keep attacking, you keep dropping. I keep attacking, you keep dropping. What's the, it is an integrity. I emphasize it is an integrity attack. I take the measurements to spot the manipulation. So what's what happened here? I keep attacking, you keep dropping. I keep attacking, you keep dropping. Remember confidential integrity available. What happens? Eventually you don't have any measurements. Exactly. What it means? No availability. I have once integrity attack, but I also targeted available. You successfully keep dropping measurements. You block attack measurements, but you don't have any measurements to control to, declare, to report to control center. So control center has no measurements to report to make a decision. So it means availability attack. So here, reconstructions plays a key role because in real world, I wouldn't be able to immediately spot the attack and find the attack and recover from cyber attack. To find the vulnerable points, attack might happen duration of the attack, one year, two weeks, three weeks. So here, reconstructions play a key role. How I can reconstruct a measurement? It is right that it will lead, I, I don't want a D, DOS, I don't want a denial of service attack. But what happens? Finally, my attack leads to denial of service attack and also availability attack. This means that we need to have also correction in our reconstruction, sorry, reconstruction in our proposed methods to reconstruct the falsified measurements. I spot the attack and I need to reconstruct the measurement. This was one uh, another important point about detection. So we are closing detection. We talked about prevention. We talked about detection. So any question? We will dive into offensive security. Any question about prevention, detection? No, okay. Offensive methods in smart grid. I have classified into two groups. Sophisticated attacks and stealth attacks. This is my own, I don't say this is correct, this is standard. This is my own definition of, this is, these words are my own definition. Sophisticated attacks and stealth attacks, intrusions. I will tell why these are my own definitions. We can have two offensive methods. Sophisticated attacks and also stealthy intrusion. What I mean by sophisticated attacks? Sophisticated attacks, I will show you. I mean that you don't need to have very skill set, specific skill set about cybersecurity penetration rate. You do need also to have a solid and robust understanding of smart grid. What's happening in smart grid? I'm a computer scientist. But I work on cybersecurity smart grid. So definitely you know more about smart grid. So you need to utilize that smart grid knowledge to use against the smart grid. By sophisticated attacks, I will review two sophisticated attacks that I already have published. And in associated attacks, I will talk about next generation of in data integrity attacks or false data injection attacks. It's still zero attacks. What I mean by sophisticated attacks? Let me try to wrap up the A couple of minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you could read uh, our this paper it published on IEEE transactions and control and network uh, systems, revealing a new vulnerability of distributed state estimation. What I mean by substitute methods? We notice the vulnerability of the system. Usually, we do have clustering, zoning in smart grid. Why it's the aim of clustering? Because we have big data, we need to split the divide the area, the power grid into different zones so we can manage better. The smaller it is, the better management we will have. 
But we notice that when we cluster the network, we will have a vulnerability on boundary buses. And we could attack boundary buses easier. We spotted that. We attacked the system. We mathematically also, not also numerically, we also mathematically show that our found vulnerable script and we attack the system with less cost. So by sophisticated attacks, I mean this. You have a good understanding of our power grid and a little bit about smart grid cybersecurity and general IT security. You find and spot the vulnerable points based on functions in smart grid, not general cybersecurity knowledge. Another one. This is since it is a, cyber, a submitted paper. I will not discuss about the details, but a question about substrate attacks. We have renewable energies. What is the renewable energy consequence? Uncertainty. When I have integration of renewable energies, I do increase uncertainty in the systems because I can say that renewable energy print, uh, output exactly. It depends on the natural parameters. If it is wind, wind, sun, and etc., different parameters that I don't have any control over them. But I can say that adding renewable energies increased uncertainty in the system. So I see from this cybersecurity aspect not to detect the system as a hacker, because in cybersecurity we have threat modeling. I need to imagine myself as an attacker, how an attacker could use this function to attack the system to be able to prevent uh, attacks or protect the system. This blue line, before integration of renewable energies, the system works. This is for on phase angles. The system works well, no uncertainties. I have integration of renewable energies, again, just 10%. You see the uncertainty of the measurements. The interval, the range of the measurement for the same phase angle for one bus has been changed. So the question, how attacker could use this Oh, sorry. How attacker could use this uncertainty to attack the system as an offensive model? Attacker could be wise and select measurements in such a way that the attack will be concealed, will be concealed between normal range of measurements. In the past, I didn't have normal range. It's a line, there is no normal range. But here I have a range. I have a range. Uncertainty increase. The attacker could conceal this attack between normal range because variance of data has been increased. It, is, it has definitely negative impact on cybersecurity. If I'm, I'm a hacker, I will see how I can use that. And I have used, we have used in one paper, and this is just final result. And I show that we showed in the paper that if I use the measurements, then this uncertainty against the system, I will be able to bypass the detectors. The de detection rate of the algorithms, well established algorithms, will be decreased. If it is a traditional FTIA, or if I use this uncertainty, the detection rate is lower if I use this uncertainty to attack, the, attack against the system. So another attack, a Celsius attack. This one is specifically about false state injection attack we discussed. But the next generation of our state injection, how we can make it more complex, advanced, and associated. The focus of the focus on the FDA is on detection. So they list have paid attention to generation side. There are some work that have paid attention to have worked on generations of FDA, new FDAs, but there are some limitations. There are some limitations. First, they relax the assumption, focus on relaxing assumption about having knowledge of the system, that they could be a matrix. They have proposed new FDIAs that they don't consider to have to follow the information. Or they have used simple GAN. In 2020, I also used that one to put uh, the Celsius FDIA. Simple GAN, simple methods. But they overlook the complexity of measurements and power system. Third, they do not have strong evaluation metrics. They use just BDD. They say that I generate this attack. It is still here. Why? Because I bypass BDD. For this, we also have, because it's also submitted paper to uh, IEEE transactions on industrial applications, I can't discuss about the details. What's the result? We have proposed a new FDIA, a method to generate complex false data injection attack. And I just present some results here. This is traditional FDA for 14 bus system. 
Detection rate of LSTM is 98% for traditional FDA. Our proposed method is 92. It shows that our proposed method is able to await the detection system. I, since it is submitted one, I had to actually present us proportion of the results. For 100, for 57 Boston, LSTM is 95 for traditional FDA, no change traditional FDA. For ours is 88, but we do have used, we have used many other evaluation metrics. Just to mention, for example, KLB. We have used KLB to show how similar our data distribution is similar to real normal measurement. Or second, BD. I just can't you know, name some of them because it's submitted papers. We have used many, many evaluation metrics to show the performance of the proposed attack. So since the time, I have also some future research directions, but since the time is limited, I wouldn't be able to talk about distribution grid, Ukrainian power grid attack, uh, smart meters attack, and other stuff, security awareness. So, but if there's any question, I would be happy to respond. The time is finished. Mm -hmm. yeah. will, will, will we be able to share the slides? Uh, I, I, it's okay I, to say no. no I, I will think about that. Any, any questions? There are two questions, Rob. Oh, yeah. Your yeah, questions, answers. Yeah. What are the practical challenges in altering reactance? Is okay. This is a good question. Uh, I will raise another open question and research direction on this. In defects, uh, Ravi, Mr. Ravi has uh, asked this question. I am asking this question, I am responding to your question with a question. I said about defects. There is another limitation. Imagine in a system, I don't have defects. Specifically for distribution grid. How I can, it is, this is the work that we are making at US Path and I'm working on this topic exactly. How I can propose an MTD method, propose moving target mechanism, defense de, uh, mechanism that don't require defects. Because defects location, has impact on the detection rate and your proposed MTD. That's why if you read papers on MTD, they always discuss about the location of defects because it affects the detection rate and cost. So this is my question. How you have said practical challenges. Imagine that I don't have defects. This is the most important challenge. Why? Because when you are talking to industry folks, one important problem is that legacy devices or imposing extra cost to them. They do not have that those devices. What if they do not have those devices or they do not have enough devices to reach, to provide, to present a successful MTD attack? Especially in distribution grid, imagine how you can, I can't respond to this question, uh, imagine how I can implement moving target defense in distribution grid where there is no defects. It is re somehow revolutionizing MTD strategy because all MTD strategies rely on defects because by uh, when we, we say that we change line reactances, how we change line reactances by defects, as I mentioned in my presentation. So if I don't have defects, what would happen if I don't have any defects? And what functions of distribution grid I could use instead of defects to gain the same performance, I mean, to reach that goal? I don't know. Uh, is uh, there is another question? I believe there is yeah, another question. Are utilities or IT industries implementing MTD? Move? Yes, IT industries also. This is well established topics in IT industries. Utilities in the smart grid section, no. IT industries, yes, because MTD is not just limited to line reactances. We also have dynamic resource allocation. We can also, in MTD, we can also work on IP change, network uh, configuration change. MTD has three methods. One is line reactances. In IT sector, it is dif different. It is a well established topic, but in smart grid, it's a recent new topic. That is not that well established one because I mentioned one limitation is not considering security and stability indexes of power grid. One another is not dynamic nature, considering dynamic nature. And third limitation is if I don't have defects, what should I do? The point is that I talked about uh, here. In traditional FDA, we do need to have uh, access to topology matrix, Jacobian matrix, but in that assumption is not that correct anymore. 
I mean, to to say that FDIA have information access info, has access to information, inside information, because the re recent generations of FDIA, many existing FDIA generations, have relaxed that assumption. So for generating FDIA, we do not need to have access to information. For example, this method that we have proposed also, Celsius FDIA, is a completely unsupervised method. We do not have any access to any information. Our proposed method doesn't have any access to information, has not bypassed encryption, has not anything with encryption. We do receive just normal measurements and we generate Celsius FDIA. Not only our work, but also other methods have relaxed that assumptions for example, if you search blind FDIA, blind, they were blind FDIA, they have proposed many FDIA methods that they don't require any access to uh, insider information like bypassing encryption. And as I mentioned, our own proposed method is, is a hybrid deep learning method, but it's completely unsupervised. We do not need to have any access to information, just normal measurements. It means that that uh, assumption is not true anymore, and it has been relaxed by other generations of FDIAs. If you search the word blind FDA, you will find the trend on FDA that doesn't have any access to Jacobian matrix. And if you search deep learning FDA, you will see that there are other published papers that also they don't have any access to information, but they generate Celsius FDA. But I said I said them limitations in regarding the deep learning methods. They do not have mathematical proof. Also, they we in our paper we mathematically have shown the single GAN single autoencoder will not be able to bypass the uh, other detectors like uh, deep learning classifiers like JST, KLD. So that's not uh, correct anymore. Okay, I think we're past time, so we'll just end here. Okay, thank you very much.